now the, now the, uh, Dr. Aftab Khan will talk about the retrograde CTO PCI tips and tricks. Yeah, thank you for this uh, invite and uh, it's, <clears throat> it's nice to see so many people late in the evening still being here for this session on CTO. But I assume that we need to understand as uh, Dr. Kaiser has said, the retrograde approach of the CTO has changed the way in which we have started treating our patients and it has improved the success rates. But again, a word of caution is that it should not be a primary default if you've not done at least 50 anti-grade uh, CTOs yourself independently. So it's only for high volume operators and it should not be the first thing that you go to because there's a learning curve for this. And as uh, Dr. Kaiser also referred, there's a compilation also that one has to be worried about. Uh, so this is one of my cases and you can see that uh, the setup as Dr. Kaiser said, we usually would go with a, uh, with a two axis setup and we need to visualize the distal artery. Here there's a proximal RCA CTO. There's an ambiguous cap, but what is more important is that there's a distal pacification of the distal RCA but can see that the distal landing zone is not too good. There's a, it's at the uh, crux and there's disease there also, uh, which means that uh, this is a not a good place where even if you enter anti-gradely, getting into the distal true lumen would be difficult with a risk of losing one of the branches. And um, this is the other view. And you can see that there are good septal collaterals which opacify the distal RCA, uh, which make it easy for us. Uh, so when you look at the JCTO score, we see this, this has a score of four. This is a patient who had been attempted earlier. So there's a blunt cap. There is an absence of calcification, but a bend and an occlusion length more than 20 or with uh, uh, no, uh, I mean, re-entry lesion at the distal uh, crux of the right coronary artery, which gives a JCTO score of four. So we decided to go retrograde here because an anti-grade approach had been tried earlier. But again, truthfully, even if it's been attempted earlier, the usual protocol in our hospital is that I would re-attempt an anti-grade if it's been done at another center and then uh, go to a retrograde if my anti-grade approach fails. Uh, but here, this was done by one of my colleagues who, had, who was quite good at uh, anti-grade approach. And since he had failed, I decided to go retrograde as front off. So what you need to do is to select the collateral and then uh, decide about which, co uh, so there are these steps which are, we need to go through. Uh, this has already been discussed and uh, one has to decide about whether to go anti-grade. And as I said, the default in all my cases of retrograde also is to try an anti-grade approach. Uh, for a short period of time and then move to a retrograde because even in a retrograde you need to prepare your anti-grade so there is an anti-grade preparation that is still needed even if you're going retrograde so one needs to select the collateral and reach this collateral and amongst the collaterals that we all know the, the septal collaterals and the epicardial collaterals and they're the bypass grafts which are uh, the collaterals also well the bypass grafts are the safest in many of the patients because they are often easy to reach uh, the septal collaterals are also e uh, good because of the fact that uh, they are safe. Uh, the only problem is that you have to be careful in not causing a problem there because in case there is a rupture of these septal collaterals, they can cause a hematoma and often we may have to close from both the ends. So if there's a hematoma or a septal rupture, you have to close from both the, uh, the anti-grade as well as the retrograde end because the bleed would still continue. Epicardial collaterals are something which are not the first default and they are used as a, a second of option unless of course you are well trained and you can do uh, this after you've done quite a few of your retrograde appro approaches. Uh, once you decide your collateral that you want to go from your retrograde, you need to reach it. And uh, as Dr. Kaiser has shown earlier also, you need to reshape your wires and there's a double bend that you would give. You need to use your uh, 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 a catheter to get your wire down to the collateral that you want. And uh, this is done on top of a, a catheter, a micro catheter that you take there. Uh, there are two ways of getting to the septal, something known as a septal surfing or something that is anatomy guided. You give a small puff of contrast into the, con into the septal of interest and then try and reach there. This is something that is now so much not used unless you are not getting anything septal collateral. And then again, one has to be careful to give a very small puff. So one has to aspirate, make sure that there's blood in that collateral uh, before you inject and use hardly a one to two cc injection into the collateral. You have to understand that these collaterals are delicate and a forceful injection can traumatize these collaterals. Uh, for the septal collaterals, uh, septal surfing, uh, it has to be a, usually a polymer jacketed wire or a hydrophilic wire. 
and uh, sewer wires are the ones that are usually go through wire. If you have a tortuous lesion, the sewer is also a great wire to go through. But for less uh, straight, uh, if you have a, a more of a more or less a straight uh, septal collateral, you can go with your fielder FC or you see on black also. Uh, well, uh, this is a case where we've started off, as I said, with a good septal collateral, and this is the septal surfing. You can see that they did not go in that collateral. So I just turned it and then you can see that we have entered into the distal reference vessel. Uh, once you've reached there, one has to confirm that you are in the distal reference and it's not really gone elsewhere. And that's the next step by giving a small contrast puff uh, anti-gradely and you can make sure that you are in the distal true reference vessel. Once we've reached there, one has to now cross with the collateral across the septal uh, collateral and reach the distal part. And uh, there are different collateral uh, catheters that one can use. There are ones which are uh, torqueable and these are ones which you do not really need to screw or you can uh, sort of uh, pushable catheters. There are sometimes problems where you may not be able to deliver the micro catheter to the distal uh, target vessel, but one can improve the, the, the uh, deliverability by improving the uh, power and the support to the micro catheter, either by using a, a support catheter such as a guidezilla or by using an anchor balloon technique or sometimes switching to something that is more uh, low profile. So uh, you have these different catheters that you can switch to and use those uh, for getting down your catheter, your, uh, your micro catheter down to the distal uh, reference vessel. Uh, so the fine cross, the turnpike LP are the ones that are normally the ones that we use. Uh, Caraval is also a good catheter to use uh, for getting your, your uh, to reach the distal uh, vessel. Once you've reached the distal vessel, now you need to cross the, the, retro, uh, the collateral retrogradely. And uh, the way to do that is you could just get your micro catheter up there and then try and enter from the catheter itself. So the good, uh, uh, successful one case would be, and if you're lucky, is to go from true to true, as uh, Dr. Kaiser was referring to. But that's sometimes not possible. Or what could just keep the wire then, try and get back your anti-grade, because now that you have a marker there, you know where to go to. Uh, or the other way is, of course, as I said, is to go from a true to a true retro, a retrograde to the uh, antigrade. But then this sometimes does not happen. And what is most commonly the way to do is to cause what we call as a reverse cart, in which, as I said, you've done an antigrade preparation. You leave a balloon in, in whatever channel it is. It's often a sub interval channel and you do a small balloon dilatation there. So it's a 2.5 balloon that's commonly used. And you inflate the balloon and then you deflate it and leave the balloon there so that this channel does not collapse. And then you retrogradely enter with your distal wire into this channel and connect the channel into the sub space. So here you can see that I've been trying to get the wire up. And this wire is the floppy wire. It's the fielder XT. As I said, it's not been going up. So one needs to escalate this retrograde wire, which usually is a Gaia second or a Conquest Pro in case of an escalation thereafter. But here the Gaia second wire then went up. Now in this view, you can see that here the wire looks pretty out of space. Uh, so this looks are not well aligned. But again, again, referring to what my colleagues and have sp spoken to earlier, when you look at the other view, you'll be pleasantly surprised that we are not as far off as we thought. And this does not seem so bad. So uh, here what was done is then a reverse cart. So you can see that the balloon is there in the anti-grade. It's been prepared. You can see the balloon inflation being done there. And the retrograde wire then crosses into the uh, retrograde guide catheter. So you can see that the, the wire has now entered into the retrograde guide catheter. The next thing to do is to sort of cast this wire which has come out and externalize it. So one way is to make sure that you don't pull out this wire completely is to put a two boost or a torquer on this part of the wire so that it does not, it gets stuck when it reaches the Corsair and it does not get pulled out because the last thing you want is to pull out from this end and then lose this end of the wire and one has to be careful not to lose this end. So this is the wire that you put a hemostatic valve or a, a torquer on. And then your aim is to stent over the anti-grade wire, uh, the wire which has gone into the uh, anti-grade uh, catheter. So this wire is then externalized and you could do this by usually the RG3 wire that is used. And then here you can see that you have to get your micro catheter up. So once I've done, what I've done is trap the wire in the retrograde kite catheter with a balloon. And now you can see that the, the micro catheter can then track up uh, without too much of an issue. Uh, so two ways that you can, or multiple ways that you can do it, after you've crossed anti you can externalize the wire and then treat it, or you can get your uh, catheter down, you can get a micro catheter down, and then externalize the wire. So here, this is the wire that's been externalized, 
and then anti greatly you've got your wire down there and this wire is then moved out and then it becomes an easy job but what is most important is this diagram here that I want to re-emphasize now since you have one unit which is right from artery to artery sometimes when you pull out your retrograde wire your anti-grade guide uh, or when you pull out your wire from the, uh, the anti-grade uh, ch channel your retrograde guide can get sucked in and it's important to make sure that you disengage both these catheters when you pull out your wire and make sure that you're pulling out your wire after only you have cat got your catheter up there so that this retrograde wire does not cause a laceration or does not cause a shearing effect on the septal collaterals. So you have to protect your wire retrogradely till the time that it is out of the septal. And here you can see that it's been taken out from there. Uh, so this is the wire uh, retrogradely. So we've treated the RCA by means of two stents and you can see that the wire is still there. And then you make a final check shoot just to make sure that your septal has not been traumatized and there's no septal hematoma. Uh, and then you pull out your catheter. Uh, so to make sure, to conclude, I would say the retrograde approach has definitely had the success of C2PCI. But again, as I said, it is not the first step that you want to go through. It requires an adequate amount of planning and requires all the hardware to be ready. One has to be careful to bail out the complications. The complications that we're nearly worried about is a dissection of the donor artery. So if you're not careful and you're pulling a microcatheter out, your donor artery can get, can get sucked in and it can cause a laceration, it can cause a, a dissection there. And the second thing that we're worried about is your damage to the, to the septal collaterals. Again, by making sure that you protect them. And as I said, in case you end up with a, a, a rupture of a collateral there, one has to stent or close from both the areas. Not stent, but has to close from both the ends to make sure that the bleeding does not persist. It's important to also understand that retrograde it has a uh, as a learning curve, and really one has to have proctors to lower quick rather than rushing in as your first case. Thank you. I'd like to end here. Thank you very much, Mr. Raftar. Uh, now floor is open for discussion. Any comments from the panel of experts? Thank you, Raftar. Uh, uh, you can remember we have a very bad, a very bitter experience for the last six hours. We fight for a. Uh, together, Aftab yeah, and me yeah, yeah. for a retrograde PCI and uh, 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 that patient spent, I think, uh, $2,000 uh, extra uh, 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 hardware. Uh, yeah, but uh, but uh, uh, selection is very uh, important, yes. the, yes. which one go to the retrograde way, the retrograde way. Yeah, and I, think I like to know, the, uh, due to increased technology of the integrate way, inventing the different wire and uh, so uh, whether uh, retrograde process is gradually reducing or uh, the same. Yeah, so I think what you need to understand is, uh, I'm referring back to that case, I think we all have to be ready to accept that there are being patients of retro, even when you try retrograde also, that you'd be, there'd be cases that you may not be able to succeed. But what is most important is to make sure that we don't cause complications. Yes. So safety is acceptable. I mean, failures are acceptable, but complications should be something that should be, should be not be, uh, we should not cause complication. That's something, point number one. The second thing is retrograde collateral, in, I mean, retrograde interventions have a definite subset. So you do, of course, as I said, I would still go anti-grade for most of my cases, even if they've been attempted elsewhere to make sure that I try and anti-grade first. But the retrograde is usually for patients, as I said, when you have an ambiguous anti-grade cap, a proximal cap, which is anti uh, ambiguous, when you have a distal landing zone, which is uh, sort of diseased and you don't really cannot do a, a star or you cannot do a stingray or re-entry. I mean, those are the patients where you have to go retrograde and make sure that you can enter into the, into the true lumen. And of course, you have to have good collaterals to, to make sure that you can do that. So the retrograde approach has an advantage. It still can be done safely and it has a, a definite role, but I would still not say that uh, there are cases where anti-grid approach anti definitely should be one of the attempts first. Yeah. Thank you, Aftab. Thank you for nice demonstration of anti -grid. Yeah. I think. Uh, Ashok. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, thank you. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Aftab Khan. Uh, anything, sometimes uh, in anti we fail to cross the wire to the distal lumen. Sometimes we go to the distal is small branch with so diffuse subintimal dissection and sometimes we call it investment. So would you uh, please tell something about investment, how does it mean and when to do it? Yeah, I think we need to understand that as I said, uh, the, the important thing in, in a CTO work intervention is to make sure that you're, you're true to true. 
you have to get into the true channel you may go from true to false and then you have to make sure that you end up in the true channel stenting if you end up stenting into a false channel you you're going to be in big trouble your artery is going to close and you're not going to have any advantages uh, there are dis despite a lot good effort that you may have made with all the available technology that you have with you with all the available hardware there are cases that you may not be able to end up getting into the good lumen and you may have caused dissections proximally where you think you're still in the true lumen well the time there is to stop and give the time for these lesions to heal so these dissections heal and then coming back later on you will be surprised to see that sometimes it's much more easier for you to to come back and finish off this procedure so the point there is that do not be in a haste to stent the artery if you're not sure about being in a in a true vessel and even if you have caused dissections do not get worried as long as they've not caused a perforation or a major complications come back again on another day and this first procedure that you've done will be as an investment procedure for a future uh, reentry yeah yes. thank you and anything uh, dr rehmat yeah Yeah, I think about about in, investment. About investment, uh, I think the main the main concern is not to enlarge that much the dissection you are producing because if you are enlarging that, then you will come back after three, two, three weeks. We'll find again you'll go through dissection, large dissection. So I think when you decide to invest, you should invest very carefully and very very good investment. That means before creating huge dissection. that is uh, main concern about uh, the wire i wanted to ask you the retrograde wiring uh, i i think uh, uh, there are two concerns about vasospasm sometime sometime in in uh, septal vessel which make it very difficult to come back sure. and the second uh, point is uh, about uh, uh, thrombosis if because procedure are duration yes. is long and i think uh, every every time you should be aware about uh, about ACT. coagulation in this in this patient yeah so very valid points i think uh, these are yeah dr aftab uh, it's a very wonderful presentation yeah. vivid description thank you so much just i want to add one thing that that what professor amol has now said we have to accept that there should be some failure cases and we should not have ego to refer those cases to our our surgical colleagues the important part is that we should not have severe complication taking patient lives so for ct operators i would always say keep the life saving measures in your cath lab like micro coils for the septal branch occlusion of this perforation like the cover stents and pericardial synthesis trolley you have to know where, when to stop thank you so Uh, stop yeah that is very important it is, it is not the ischemic case that you have to do cto cannot usually does not produce death but any complication perforation rupture may produce the death so when to stop that is very important thank you sir 